A new documentary is looking at the vibrant life and tragic death of celebrity chef Anthony Bourdain. We asked Jim Axelrod to take a closer look. When Anthony Bourdain, the chef, best-selling author, and globe-trotting TV star, died by suicide three years ago at the age of 61, we have some terribly sad news uh, to report this morning, heartbreaking. The news stunned those closest to him. New York City chef Gabrielle Hamilton was shattered. I had to go home and lie down on the floor. I mean, actually, for kind of weeks. Lydia Tanaglia. He would just kind of flop on the couch. Quite a backdrop, you know. Who produced his hit show, Parts Unknown, was mystified. Why? Would someone who seemingly had the best job in the world and the most incredible life, why would he make a decision to check out? Did you know he was suffering to that degree? No, I did not know he was suffering to that degree. I knew and his like brother most... Christopher. I was the bad one. Yes. Was... Struggled That's with so many other emotions. I miss him terribly and, and, and love him still. And he was so brilliant and he counted for so many people. And like, you know, I'm angry at him. Like, why did you do that, you know? I want people to be able to make some sense out of his death. But filmmaker Morgan Neville Hola. knew the shock was also shared by legions of Bourdain's fans who never met the man. Do you think there was a little bit of be careful what you wish for in Tony Bourdain's life? Absolutely. The story we're telling is somebody who in middle age, who has been working as a chef for 25 years, okay, is suddenly given world fame, fortune, and the chance to travel the globe. It's everything he always wanted. It's pretty amazing. The question is, what happens when you get everything you always wanted? Why am I here? Am I insane? His new documentary, Roadrunner, which opens in theaters July 16th, is Neville's attempt to answer that question, exploring this complexity elicited by the life and death of Anthony Bourdain. I hope the film in some way gets people to start to think of him as a whole person again. Hey, what's up, man? To at least process some aspect of his death, but also his life. Let me take you on a notional joyride through our menu tonight. Anyone familiar with the extraordinary trajectory of Bourdain's life, from $800 a week line cook in sweaty New York City kitchens, to an invitation from a president for dinner mm. in Vietnam. This is killer. This is outstanding. <laughs> so good to hear. It's really good. Knows that means examining quite a few dimensions. Was Tony a good cook? <laughs> he, he would be the first to tell you that that was not his number one strength. Gabrielle Hamilton, whose restaurant Prune was one of the hottest in pre-pandemic New York City. We all love you. Met Bourdain as his bestseller, Kitchen Confidential, was launching him as a bold-faced name. He was a loyal but complicated pal. It was such a one-way friendship. Wait, which direction? He would love you. He would be generous to you. Who was once quoted as saying, the kind of care and feeding required of friends I'm frankly incapable of. I'm not going to remember your birthday. Come on, that's very Tony. And, and it's so candid and forthright. So who cares if it's like, I don't remember your birthday. I better leave before I get mobbed by fans. Somebody described him as the nicest ass they ever met. <laughs> what do you think they were getting at with that lovely description? I think he could be really tough on people, particularly people he worked with. Um, but because he was even tougher on himself, you have a good karma. Can't believe you said that. This high yeah. priest good of camaraderie and connection. So. That's a mean looking fish. Who built a brand shrinking the world one exotic meal at a time. Excellent meal. Also spent much of his life staving off loneliness and isolation, cycling through phases and addictions. Sometimes his addictions were good, like jujitsu and exercising or uh, family, but sometimes they could be destructive, like cigarette smoking and drinking and, and even, I would say, workaholism. He was always rushing to get into the scene. He was rushing to get out of the scene. I think there was even this deeper psychological reason of being static, being home, means that you're left alone with your, your thoughts and I guess your demons. Yeah. For me, I always feel this little unease, like, you know, 
You feel you haven't suffered enough yet? Or but as the documentary hauntingly portrays in a clip with one of his heroes, punk rock icon Iggy Pop, the one recipe that seemed to always elude him. What thrills you? The one for sustained contentment wasn't actually all that complicated. It's just very embarrassing, but it's really embarrassing. Being loved and actually appreciating the people that are giving that to me. When he's walking along with Iggy Pop, ask him about happiness. Yeah, yeah. It's heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Perhaps saddest for those who miss him most is that he died not really understanding all the lives he touched. Take the wall full of notes left after his suicide at a restaurant where Bourdain once cooked. When that outpouring came after his death and all these people around the world responded in this incredible way, I just wish he could have seen that. Look at the incredible impact that you made in connecting humanity. That to me is like his really beautiful legacy. While the film deals extensively with the circumstances surrounding Bourdain's death, following a breakup with Asia Argento, an Italian actress he'd grown infatuated with. You're probably gonna find out about it anyway. This is a film that examines what happens to legacy when a high profile life ends by suicide. What do you think the meaning is for all of these people who still remain devoted to the memory of Tony Bourdain. One of the unfortunate things about somebody who obviously has some kind of tragic part to them is does that undermine or somehow diminish the message they were trying to get out there? Does it make what he was attempting to show us by going to places like, you know, Libya and uh, Congo. Or does it diminish what he was trying to show us and tell us? I don't have an answer. I, I, I hope not. Morgan Neville has made a reminder of just what that message was. He's all the way out. Tony was the advocate in our society for how we can treat people on the far side of the planet as dimensional people who have their own dreams and loves and families and hopes. And I think that is the greatest achievement that he had. A message and a messenger people haven't had a chance to connect with in a while. I think a lot of people are gonna to come to the film because they need that dose of him again. I just miss him, I miss him 